Hello everyone, I'm Jimmy, and welcome back to episode 4 of Omnifactory. So uh, if we take a quick look around, you'll notice the terrains change a little bit. I ripped the building that was here up, I ripped the building that was there up, and uh, I replaced it with a tree farm. And by tree farm, I, I really just mean a big, huge blob of trees um, to take advantage of the, you know, the chain mining of the lumber axis. I uh, also, I was um, disenchanting these, hoping to get, if uh, rather unbreaking. And if you look, I got smelting on this one. And uh, I mean, I guess it does what you expect it to do, right? When you chop the oh dear, when you chop the tree, you uh, it, it smelts the components. But uh, what I didn't expect is actually it smelts the the sap or whatever into these tar balls, and they burn for 800 ticks, which is what half of a charcoal. Which is actually pretty good. It basically gives you 50% extra yield. Because we already have, you know, way more tar balls than we actually need. So, really quick, you know, I chop the trees, collect the bits. Um, I'm going to try to chop this big blob, although it might even break my axe at half durability. Maybe I should repair it first. Let's do that. But first, um, let me drop off all this tar. So I've been burning the tar. And I've been also compressing the charcoal just because uh, you, get, you get a little bit more more burn time that way. Anyways, um, while we while we do this, I think my goal today is to finish up that uh, magmatic generator we talked about yesterday. But I also need to go to the Nether to pick up a little bit of uh, glowstone so that I can start making energetic alloy. Um, that way we can uh, start doing more, you know, medium voltage stuff. You saw that we had the the blast furnace up at the end of last episode. Um, it's been running a bit. I've been cooking. Uh, I've been cooking some aluminum with it. Excuse the lag. That's a bunch of visual lag from the uh, trees being chopped, I guess. Um, anyways, I cooked up a couple stacks of aluminum, but if we can get some energetic alloy as well, we can start doing stuff like making the loot fabricator, um, you know, making MB machines, and, and yeah, all that good stuff. So uh, let me clean this up, and we'll come back when we're, uh, I think, ready to go tackle the nether. Alright, here we are with our nether portal. Um, right now, I think my goal is just to go in there, snag a little bit of soul sand and nether rack, see if we can, you know, scout out a spot to put our uh, ender pump. Who knows, if we're lucky, maybe we'll spawn close to a uh, fortress. And if we're unlucky, we'll spawn over lava. How'd we do? Oh, and get some glowstone. Looks decent. Should uh, mark the portal so we know, you know, where to go home. Pretty close to the big pool of lava that we'll be pumping out. Having a jetpack makes the Nether a whole lot less scary. I think I can turn up my render distance to see a little bit further. We'll grab some of the glowstone on our way out. Ah, much better. Oh, never mind, much too laggy. Ah, looks like that was just a one-time thing. Alright. I should have made a uh, glider so I could get around a little bit faster. Alright, looks like no fortress in the immediate vicinity, although a massive lava lake is good. Um, I think I'll stop here, grab some of the uh, glowstone, grab some netherrack and soul sand, and head back. See you soon. Alright, and we're back. Um, so here are the spoils of our journey. A uh, bunch of glowstone, some soul sand, some netherrack. I'll show you what we're going to do with the uh, soul sand and netherrack later. But first, for the glowstone, um, we have everything put together to make a basic mixer. So if we go over here and just set this up, uh, oh, I also upgraded this to a 16x uh, line with a 16x CF powering it. So there's now 16 slots. What that means is that this will now output 16 amps, which can power, so the blast furnace takes four, and it can power the blast furnace and up to 12 other machines simultaneously. 
So the mixer, um, it'll let us combine some redstone with some glowstone. Let's just do uh, four stacks total for now. And what it produces is this energetic blend. And with energetic blend, we can throw it in a what is this? We can throw it in a blast furnace with gold and make energetic alloy. So that's um, our next step. Let's as that works up, let's pick up uh, just about a stack of gold, maybe. Looks like we don't have a stack of gold. Do we have gold ore? It's not in. All right, looks like we might have to. Well. Uh, I'll show you my plan for making a little bit more gold then while we while we wait for this. Um, you know how we can use deep mob learning to make a lot of iron? Well, likewise, we can use it to make a lot of gold. So let's do 40 and 40. And this will start up. And so, so you see, we, we made three stacks of aluminum. It'll make some energetic alloy. It takes it a little while, so let's not wait for it. So if you look at the recipe for gold, um, yeah, we can make it out of this hellish matter with deep mob learning. Um, and there's two ways to make hellish matter. We can either upgrade overworldian matter to it, or we can directly just uh, do either blaze, ghast, or wither skeleton simulations. Um, I, let's see, that takes a skeleton skull. That's not too bad, uh, but I think let's do blaze for now, at least at first. So to do that, we need, um, what, what is this, seven hellish matter? That's what we needed the netherrack for. So let's go ahead and make those. And then we need a single blaze dust. Um, I think these brewing stands that we've been picking up throughout the Lost Cities, yeah, can be turned into a single blaze rod and then macerated into four blaze dust. So then the other thing we need is this blank data model. Do we we didn't make any extras, unfortunately. All right, so we need pulsating mesh, fine gold wire, and electrical steel plates. I do believe we made extras of these. Yes, we did. So let's let's turn both of these into blank data models since we're we're sure to use them both. We need some electrical steel plates. I think I cooked up some electrical steel earlier. 32, let's turn, or six, let's stack, let's turn half of it into plates. So we need six of these, two basic circuits. And I think we are almost out of basic, and we are actually out of basic circuits as of now. That's all right, we'll make another batch and soon we'll get access to uh, easier circuits. Four per, so we need, all right, we'll make our one and then come back for the other. Oops, and we don't have a blaze powder on us. All right, so that's the Blaze data model. Now, if you look at it, the simulation cost is much higher at 1,000 RF a tick. So we won't be able to run this, you know, at 100% uptime. But uh, we will be able to run it for little bits at a time. And for now, we only need a little bit of it, so that's fine. Let's grab a little bit more of that. So what we can do then is in here, we can take out our zombie one, which if you look, you'd see it's reached the top tier, self-aware tier, which um, means that 30% of the time you get a pristine matter out of it. Whereas here, only 5% of the time you get a pristine matter. But it'll, and look at all this zombie matter we got over time, it'll uh, level up over time, that's fine. 
You can just feed it a stack of polymer clay for now. This machine, I think it doesn't start the process until it has enough energy to finish a run. So, um, it'll drain, but it'll slowly refill from our dynamos. And with with just a couple runs of this, we'll be able to, you know, go to the nether and uh, have ourselves a good time getting some, um, getting some magma or some lava power. All right, so... This has cooked up 13 energetic alloy. I think soon we'll be able to make um, our loot fabricator so we can turn all those pristine matters into probably iron. But yeah, um, while that works, let's see what our next step is. We can upgrade our dynamos. That seems like a good idea, right? We can, it's just you know more power for free. Let's pick up the aluminum and energetic alloy as well just to see what quests are behind it. So auxiliary transmission coils increase the rate at which dynamos produce energy. That's fine. And these are just MV machines. But I guess we, we also need um, MV energy conduits, don't we? So we can go make those. We can claim this quest. Sorry, this feels a little scatterbrained right now. So how about I'll cut here and come back when I have a bit of a plan for what we're going to do next. All right, and we're back. So if you look here, I've already made uh, two ender pumps, and I'm going to make the um, ender, or two ender tanks, sorry. I'm going to make the ender pump now. So that'll be four uh, electric pumps. And if you look at this, this is just, what, the four pumps, a block of ender pearls, which we have, and four obsidian, which we have to grab. And those, there's our ender pump. I think there was a quest for this. Oh, I didn't pick up the pump, so I didn't get the quest credit. Well, that sucks. Um, I'm sure we'll grab it at some point sooner or later. That's all right. Um, so now that we have these bits, I need one magmatic dynamo so that we can power this in the, uh, you know, over in the end, and some type of tank to act as a buffer. So how about I take a second to make those, and then we'll head over to the end and set up this pump. All right, and now I think we have everything we need to head over to the nether and set up our pump. But first, I think uh, we're going to leave some stuff here in the overworld. We have so we made four magmatic dynamos. Three of them will stay in the overworld. And we made two ender tanks, and one of them will stay here. So let's take everything else. That's um, the ender pump, a tank, a dynamo and the ender tank, um, and just some building supplies, and head on over. Now the ideal placement for uh, for the pump is right dead smack in the middle of the largest lava lake you can find right above lava level. But uh, you know, obviously you don't want to fall into the lava to do it. That'll have to do. I kind of want it one level lower. But to do so, well, here, I can do this. Nope, I didn't do it. Alright, that's as, that's as brave as I'm willing to get. So we want our pump here. Pump needs power. Let's see, how do I want to do this? Do 
Do I have a bucket? I have a bucket of water. Well, that's fine. Buy water. So you see now that the pump's getting power, it's slowly pumping up lava. Um, I think it's working directly under it. So if you look under it, you see that um, it's kind of tough here. Let me get rid of that block. See how that block is stone? The ender pump turns uh, lava blocks into stone when it pumps it up. That way it reduces the number of uh, block updates, so it should lag less. But its internal buffer is, you know, filling up, so let's pump it from its internal buffer into a tank. Let's put this here. And then we can go from the tank to the drum. I mean, from the tank to the dynamo to make sure the dynamo is always powered. And lastly, we'll put the uh, put the ender tank there. Connect those up. Now the ender tank should be filling up. So the last thing we have to do, actually didn't check, hey, we coincidentally fit entirely in one chunk, luckily enough. We have to, ch whoops, we have to chunk load the one chunk we're in, which I think is this one. Yeah. So if you chunk load the chunk that the pump is in, it'll chunk load the chunk that it's working in. Alright, so while this runs, let's uh, head back to our base, and then we'll set up the um, magmatic dynamos on that side. See you soon. And welcome back to our humble little base here. Um, I've gone ahead and set up everything, and uh, if you look, we've upgraded our energy conduits to these energetic alloy energy conduits, now that we can make energetic alloy in our blast furnace. Um, so these magmatic dynamos, they only produce 60 RF a tick at the basic tier by default. So let's go ahead and turn them on, you know, by pumping the lava into them. And the three of these together then are producing, um, what is it, 180? That's not all that much, right? We're already producing something like 640 from those three. But if you upgrade these with these uh, isentropic reservoir augments, their power production, for one, goes up significantly. It goes to 240 each, so three of these are now producing, what, 720 RF a tick? And they consume a little bit of water to do it, but, you know, water is free. Now, with these upgrades, if you, um, you can replace them with, or instead of using water, you can use either crushed ice or gelid cryothium for an even bigger boost. Um, they consume the fluids slower and you get a, you know, a bigger power boost. But uh, for now, water will do, and I, I'd say it's doubtful we'll ever upgrade to anything uh, besides water. So yeah, three of these, uh, they slowly they consume a bit more lava than without the upgrade, I believe. But um, yeah, they're, we're now producing significantly more power. This should be filling up faster. Uh, we don't quite have a use for all this power yet, but that's okay. We'll, we'll use it sooner than sooner rather than later. Um, so with that, let's see, I, I think we also completed quite a few quests along the way. Let's just grab all our Omni coins for that. So what, 25 plus 35? We can, we can buy ores with those as we go. So I think the next thing we want to get into would be tier 2 circuits. So, so far we've only been using these, uh, basic tier 1 circuits. I think I'm even out of them. But um, there's only so much you can, we can do with those basic tier 1 circuits. So let's see what it would take to get to making tier 2 circuits, which are required for most MV machines. So we need some gallium, which comes from sphelerite. And I think I had already macerated down a bunch of impure sphelerite dust. So if we make a centrifuge, we can centrifuge this and get tiny piles of gallium out of it. And then this, again, we can electrolyze and get small piles of gallium out of it. Perfect. So we're going to need a centrifuge and we should probably set up the conduits for these machines. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And um, 
Yeah, make us some gallium. So remember how seconds ago I was like, we can use these Omni coins to buy some ores? Well, we ran out of this uh, uraninite stuff. So instead of going mining just for this, uh, let's just go buy like four stacks of it. Easiest mining ever. All right, and now we have our centrifuge. Um, it's been running for a little bit, running uh, centrifuging these impure piles of sphalerite dust. And uh, as you can see, we have some gallium, some sphalerite. We can take the sphalerite and move it to the uh, electrolyzer here, where it'll process down into more gallium and zinc. But um, having run that for a while already, I think we're now ready to make some tier two circuits, which use these diodes. So let's just make a bunch of those. And the pricey bit is that um, they take, let's see, they take four tier one circuits for each tier two. So yikes. But, you know, such is the price you pay. We need some red alloy and raw iron. Perfect. And for now, let's just make a make a couple. We'll need more than four, but they're expensive enough that I think four will will be a good start. And the first thing I want to do with these is actually make the loot fabricator. So uh, this uses some of that um, energetic alloy that we made in the blast furnace and some of those tier two circuits. And with it we can start turning all of these uh, pristine matters into useful well, loot. So if we take the zombie matter, um, I actually am hurting on food, so I'm going to make uh, a couple stacks of potatoes first, strangely enough. Uh, it uses a fair bit of energy, but that's all right. It doesn't you know, run all that often. All right, so we have a stack and a half of potatoes. I'll cook that up to eat. And the rest of it, I'll just turn into iron ingots. Um, even with turning all the the matter into iron ingots, we we need more. So, what do we have? Like one, two, three, four, four and a half stacks of zombie matter. We'll turn into what over fifty stacks of iron. Sounds pretty good to me. So, um, I'm not sure if I showed this yet, but I. Uh, redid our smelting setup a little bit. Um, we have an input chest for smeltables, an input chest for fuels, and an output chest for, you know, things that get smelted. So, having taken care of tier 2 processors, I think the next thing on our list, let's see, we can start going into MB machines, or we can get hardened and subsequently um, reinforced upgrades for our uh, dynamos. And what that'll really enable us to do is put a bunch of these, um, where are they? The efficiency upgrades into them. These are fuel catalyzers. That way we can uh, get a better, you know, a bit better fuel efficiency. We don't really need to put these uh, auxiliary transmission coils in them. Um, they boost the production, but right now we produce more RF than we consume. So um, the other thing we can tackle is the pyrolyse oven, which is another multi-block uh, like the blast furnace, and uh, it'll produce cold coke, but most importantly phenol which we'll use to make Im improved circuits. But um, yeah, I think let's wrap up this episode here. Uh, we'll be back next time. Um, I'll pick which of these, you know, there's always multiple projects you can tackle at a time. And uh, we'll see which one I think is most uh, beneficial. So hope to see you next time. Take care now.